Hello everyone, welcome to my watercolor painting channel and today we're going to paint an artichoke. I've been growing artichoke in my garden for years and I absolutely love the look of them. They usually uh, flower in July here in the UK and bees absolutely love them. So this is my third attempt of painting artichoke. I've done it in the past and today I'm going to be painting it with you and explaining how to approach painting artichoke using watercolour. So I'm using my artichoke from the garden, so I took a picture of it and then I printed on my printer and as you can see it doesn't really match uh, colour-wise with the real object because on the paper uh, it looks a lot colder. Uh, so it's uh, very handy to have real objects with you because that way you uh, have more chances to uh, paint it in the right colour combination or at least closer to original color combination and also here I'm uh, showing where the lights come in so it's coming from the right so for my first layer for the artichoke I'm just using quite basic uh, combination of colors I'm using raw sienna plus sap green have a look at the combination uh, on my right where I'm pre-mixing it on my palettes uh, the consistency, uh, it's not super watery, but yet it's not very saturated in colors. And then I will be using different shade of green, um, which I mixed using Payne's Grey and Sap Green together. Um, and also for the some of the layers with purpley color on my artichoke, I'm using combination of three colors. So it's Prussian blue mixed with light red and a little bit of purple lake. It will get to that really muddy color. Uh, so I'll be using it just a little bit of this color and then I will be layering more intense and more, and more um, purple, uh, purpley color. So it will be less muddy, but I will start with this combination. So we're going to start uh, painting every single petal on uh, an artichoke. I don't know, can you call it petal? I don't know. So I'm using uh, my brush size number six and I'm starting to cover first, um, um, I'll call it just petal. Um, I will. Uh, so I'm using the combination of color of, of sap green mixed with raw sienna and there I can see there's just a a little bit of Payne's grey and as you can see I show that the light coming from the right uh, hand side so I'm leaving the side of each petal uh, a lot more lighter than the left side and then I'm moving on to another petal and I'm covering it with really watery mixture we are painting wet on dry every single petal individually and then moving between them so um, as much as I uh, add color I also do lifting the pigment uh, technique and I'm just moving unnecessary paints and then I'm just dropping with my brush uh, bits of um, raw sienna and Prussian blue it gives that uh, really um, kind of yellowish slash green color and I'm just dropping in, in some areas on my artichoke and then I'm moving on to another uh, petal on my artichoke and I'm just allowing uh, some of the um, some of the petals that I already work with uh, to soak, and uh, I'm also showing you how watery that first layer is. So it's not too dry, but it's so it's not damp. It's watery, but it's not too much water. And then I'm swapping to my different brush that I use for lifting the pigment. I'm just pulling color from the right hand side away leaving that space lighter because as I said before uh, the light on my reference picture is coming from the left or from the right sorry and then I'm moving on uh, to my next uh, petal I'm using mauve sap green 
with uh, raw sienna and a little bit of cadmium yellow here and I'm just painting uh, this petal uh, with my brush size number six uh, as you can see it looks quite watery and uh, plus as well that paper is very absorbent I'm using Arches 300 GSM so and it's cold press and it absorbs a lot of water which I absolutely like before we begin I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon where I upload watercolor tutorial lessons weekly. Join me and become my student. I'm swapping to different size brush. I'm, I'm using here a uh, size number zero from Pro Arte, and I'm just using that uh, purpley combination, and I'm applying uh, it uh, as vertical lines uh, in some areas on my uh, artichoke uh, petal. As you can see, I'm not covering it all. I'm looking at my reference picture, and it's like. Um, Vertical, uh, vertical lines all all across artichoke, and mostly it gets more saturated towards the bottom. So I'm just applying more to the bottom where you you can see it like in the shady area where one petal um, overlapping another, and I'm just uh, using my brush to make those strokes, and um, I'm just allowing them to bleed to. Um, blend together with my previous layers and I'm moving on to my different petal doing exactly the same so I'm just painting uh, purpley lines an object that has uh, different segments is very interesting to paint and also it allows you to work with different areas almost simultaneously as you notice that I use uh, uh, some time while I'm waiting for other parts to get soaked in or, or I'm allowing some time to pass and in this time I can uh, move on and paint uh, different parts like I've moved on and I'm painting now another uh, petal of artichoke I'm using the combination of sap green and raw sienna as you can see inside I left it a lot lighter and uh, um, and edges are a lot darker and then I'm so I'm still painting wet on dry and I'm just using my brush size number six and I'm uh, using the same combination sap green and raw sienna and I'm just covering that bottom uh, petal going into edges very carefully and I'm spreading the color and then I'm just lifting the pigment that I don't need and moving the paint into edges as well and then I'm, I'm swapping to my different brush to do more uh, lifting the pigment technique as you can see that I left it out and I allowed that, uh, top, that first petal that I've painted and I'm just uh, now can move paint even more and then I'm swapping again and I'm painting now that petal uh, that's uh, on the bottom and I'm adding that uh, bright green color using the combination of sap green and burnt uh, sap green and uh, 
raw sienna. I slightly sped up my process here and I'm pre-mixing a really thick combination of sap green with uh, raw sienna. As you can see it's very concentrated and I'm applying this to the shady area and half tone area and it's quite thick and then I'm washing my brush it's wet but it's not it doesn't have a lot of water and I'm blending it in so I'm allowing that uh, darkest green spot to be in the middle of each uh, petal and uh, so that way I'm creating the volume of every single one of the petals I'm applying it in the middle and then I'm spreading it uh, with my wet but clean brush um, and it creates just uh, an area for highlights, uh, half tones and reflected light and then I will be adding more uh, color to the shady area and later with my brush I will be collecting this extra to create highlights and the reflected light so I'm just allowing it to set and at the mean in the meantime I'm moving on to my different petals and I'm applying more green paint on the um, bottom petals and I'm moving on to my petals that are, are on top using the same principle so I am just applying more green paint at the bottom and then less paint uh, at the top because remember where the light's coming from My first petal right in the middle of my artichoke is now 100% dry so I'm pre-mixing uh, my color combination of those muddy purple colors so I'm using Prussian blue mixed with light red and purple lake and I'm using my brush size number six to make those uh, vertical stripes but as you can see they're not 100% vertical they kind of curvy uh, the size and I'm just applying those stripes and they're not uh, uh, solid as you can see that I am moving my hand that way so I'm just making them stripey but they're not perfect stripes are they so and I'm moving on to the different petals that already dried out so I'm painting wet on dry right now and as you can see it instantly gives a uh, really big uh, change uh, for my painting because that concentrated color that rich in color just lifts all the all the painting up so I'm just uh, swapping to my smaller size brush I'm using brush size number zero zero and I'm just starting with the edge of the petal and I'm just applying sap green with mixed with raw sienna and I'm just blending it together making those tiny tiny brush strokes all the way through the petal but I'm leaving the area in the middle sort of untouched or just uh, where the brush strokes doesn't go all the way through so they won't blend with purple brush strokes because if they do they will cover the area yes yeah? so just make sure that you don't cross the, them too and then at the same time I'm just moving on using sap green with raw sienna but it's more like raw sienna as you can see that these are uh, highlights uh, area so I'm using quite really light uh, combination so the color is not saturated at all and I'm painting those brush strokes vertically because they recreate the same um, characteristics of the artichoke
Moving on to my artichoke again. So I'm using brush size number 00, so it's a very thin brush and I'm using the combination of colors raw sienna and sap green and this is um, a very diluted version so I'm applying it to high lights so you can see through and then I tend to apply a lot more concentrated mixture of those two colors in a shady and half tones area As you can see my brush strokes are neat and tidy and uh, some of them I, I'm not afraid uh, that are blending sort of together and then separately I'm going uh, and I'm adding only raw sienna, it's that orangey uh, colour, orangey brown colour and I'm just uh, applying to the same petal just the brush strokes of raw uh, sienna only. And uh, I also added it to the top of my petal as well. And while I'm just leaving that petal, I'm moving on to another. And I'm using a, a lot uh, concentrated uh, mixture of uh, sap green mixed with a little bit of Prussian blue uh, to create a cold green uh, uh, color. And I'm applying it to the shady area. This is the close-up on my artichoke, so I'm applying combination of colors of sap green with raw sienna and just a little bit of uh, burnt amber to, ma to make those final brush strokes on the stem. If you look at the reference picture, well, it's a little bit blurred, but um, on actual image uh, and an actual uh, artichoke on the stem, it has a lot of very distinctive uh, vertical lines. So I'm repeating it with my brush and I'm applying them with brush size number zero and I'm painting wet on dry. Um, making those uh, dark lines, vertical lines all the way and I tend to use more of them in the middle to highlight that this is a shady area and I'm also adding darker brush strokes under the head of uh, my flower head and uh, um, at the bottom as well. And then moving on to my artichoke, uh, painting wet on dry, I'm just uh, applying more of uh, brush strokes of my colder green, so I'm using Prussian blue mixed with sap green, I'm just making it um, more brush strokes and I'm laying them that way that they come in out of the shady area. So the last thing I'm gonna do to my artichoke head I am gonna add some dots all over the petals of artichoke so for this I'm gonna be using a uh, purple lake mixed with Prussian blue to get this color uh, it's gonna be quite dark uh, saturated color uh, and I'm using my brush size number zero you can use the brush that is um, even smaller for example double zero and just with the tip of the brush you just um, add those dots on some places on the um, each petal and as you you can see that I don't add it like everywhere just occasional on some in some places and this is the last bit so I think now my painting is complete I'm very pleased with the result and um, I really like the color combination on that artichoke and um, yeah I'm very pleased with that Join me on Patreon to watch full tutorial and have a full access to my growing library with watercolor lessons which I add to my channel weekly. And I think this is it. I hope you enjoy watching it and goodbye!